You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Hey friends, welcome back to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. I have a few updates I'm going to drop because I'm excited about a number of things, but we'll just start with the basics. DanDuvall.com is the home of the Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall podcast, and that website is not just the listing of most recent podcasts and so forth. It also serves as a store where you can get really cool stuff. And where you can sign up for our newsletter and to be a podcast patron. That just means you get a few benefits and we get a few bucks. Now, Overcomer Accelerated is our platform. It is a learning platform for those that are recovering from backgrounds of severe trauma. At this platform, you get a number of things, including over 100 hours of coursework that has been designed to train coaches in how to help survivors of the deepest kinds of trauma. But but going through Overcomer Accelerated, it is for a different reason. It is to accelerate the healing journey. It, it does not actually equip anyone with the ability to minister, but to better receive ministry. Now, there are different ways to join the program, and, and, and those are listed on the website, overcomeraccelerated.com. But in addition to the courses, you also will get, uh, with the standard subscription, uh, access to group coaching with yours truly, and also a book study with others that have joined the program. And you will work through books that explain things and are hugely insightful with others that are taking a healing journey. And so uh, that is available. Now, for those of you that listen to this podcast and say, I want to be part of God's army to help the broken, because I am in a position to step into ministry. I, I am healed. I have passion. I have a call. We have an, an institute. And it's at institute.bridemovement.com. And right now we are enrolling for year one of the School of Inner Healing and Deliverance. Now at institute.bridemovement.com, we offer a ton of stuff, right? You can buy courses one at a time and just add them to your archives. But we do offer something now called the School of Inner Healing and Deliverance. We'll be taking applications through the end of November at the School of Inner Healing and Deliverance, which you can access right from institute.bribemovement.com, you will be able to uh, fill out an application, schedule an open house. And, and this is the beginning of a what, what is now a three-year school. And we have at Bride Ministries released a bunch of coaches. We have trained people to stand on the front lines and help those that are overcoming backgrounds of government-sponsored mind control projects, SRA. They have extraordinary trauma and, and, and Jesus is working to heal them, but he needs an army of people to help. And so we have gone from a one-year program to a two-year program, and now we are finally at a three-year program and there's a lot to it. I'm not going to give you all the details in this intro, but you can get more info at institute.bridemovement.com and by clicking the link to the School of Inner Healing and Deliverance. The Bride Tribe Advance is coming up quickly. And for those of you that do not follow the church, you have not been getting well the updates. Some of you that listen to the podcast only know about the podcast, but we have a whole community of what we call Bride Tribers. And every year we have a con that is an advance and it is going to be three days of radical transition for your spiritual walk. You're going to meet people that are like-minded from all over the world. It's so amazing. Uh, we are expecting well over 500 people this year. We're going to be meeting at the Royal Sinesta in Houston in the Galleria area. You could sign up at booking.bridemovement.com. Uh, 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 registration for this is almost over. So by the time you are hearing this announcement, you do not have very long before registration closes completely because this event is coming up at the beginning of November. So please, if this is something that you would like to participate in, and it's going to be a, a whole group of speakers, myself included, and others, and we're bringing in some friends of mine from overseas. So I, I, I am very excited for those of you that will be joining us and for the rest of you that are just now learning. Don't delay booking.bridemovement.com. Lastly, we have a new book that 
I wrote. It's called Pummel the Devil, a biblical foundation for spiritual warfare. Why? Because I want you to give the devil a black eye. Like I say all the time, it's always a good day to give the devil a bad day. So I wrote a book about why. This book is available from bridemovement.com on the shop page. You can get the paperback today. It is only available at bridemovement.com and it is only available in the paperback format until November. Then we will be releasing the ebook version and it'll also go live on amazon.com. And so we are uh, just very excited for all the impact I know this book is going to have on people. Buy one, buy one for your friend. With that said, we're going to get right to the program. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Those were your announcements. Well, friends, welcome back to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. And I am sitting here with a very special guest um, for a number of reasons. And this 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 episode is absolutely not going to go the way you might think it is. I, it's certainly not going to go the way I thought it would. Um, I have I have with me Sue Ford. And some of you listening to this podcast may know Sue Ford as as Bryce Taylor, who wrote the book, Thanks for the Memories. And, and I will say this, uh, that book was, for me, part of my own awakening and preparation for the work that God had called me into to help survivors of satanic ritual abuse and government-sponsored projects. It was an extraordinary expose of programming and 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 the agenda for MK Ultra for for Project Monarch for for presidential slaves um and and the high level trafficking human trafficking even to the White House over um many presidential occupations and and um all of the things that Sue Ford wrote about you know it, it really is still blowing minds today. And, and and the reason why I know this is because we use that book as part of the DID Coach Mentorship Training Program. I, I make all of my students read it. And so when um, we were able to connect, I was very excited. I've been looking forward to this. And and I'll tell you what, the curveball came immediately because the, uh, the Sue Ford that I'm sitting with today actually goes by the name Esther. And she is going to tell you why, but this connects to a very deep conversation around twinning. And as many of you may know, and if you don't know, you will find out very soon, when they were doing programming and and experiments, human experiments in Nazi Germany, Dr. Josef Mengele did a lot with twins. He did a lot with twins, and that laid a foundation that is not well understood even now, why they did so much focus on twinning. But what that enabled them to do is quite literally extraordinary and, uh, and off the charts. And and that has definitely had its effects in Sue Ford's life. And so, um, Esther, welcome to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Thank you, Dan. And thank you for all that you've done to help survivors be heard, have a voice, and to make this all real, that more people could come free. I just am very grateful for your work all these years. Thank you. Thank you, I, and I'm very grateful as well. And and so let's 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 start here. You know, you explained to me. You go by the name Esther, and you introduced yourself to me as Sue Ford's twin. So with that, please explain to. Um, our listening audience, who you are relative to the Sue Ford that wrote the book, Thanks for the Memories. I am her identical twin sister, and I actually even did a DNA test. Um, she had already done it, and I did one, and it came back that we're identical twins, So, um, but with different countries. Anyway, what, what this all means is that we were carried as twins in the same womb of our mother, uh, who is partly our biological mother, but sh she was mainly just a surrogate uh, to be to carry us. And Sue was born first, so they called Joseph Mengele called her Twin A, 
and I was born second and they called me twin B and our mother never actually saw me. Um, I started becoming one of the hidden ones right then. And when the, the men in suits, as everybody knows, uh, they are, were our owners, um, men came and took me. And um, I'll just say right now uh, that this isn't easy for me to talk about, but um, our owner, I'm going to name right now because the Holy Spirit has asked me, Jesus is everything to me. Jesus is everything to me. And he asked me this morning to tell the truth, uh, to tell the truth. And so our owner that my sister wasn't actually aware of because I was more cross-programmed with her to keep her in the dark in, in these bigger, e more evil uh, places in our lives. Uh, his name is, was, he's now died in 2007. His name is um, Baron Guy in French. Baron Guy de Rothschild was our owner. And I thought that's where I was taken. Uh, from the minute I was an infant, I went to him in France. Um, oh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm just shaking. This is. <laughs> so doing great. I, I was a hidden one. I was hidden and I was hidden in. Um, uh, I was taken to a Rothschild slave farm, black slave farm, where. Um, the biggest gift that God ever gave me, even though the Rothschilds didn't mean it for my good, um, was I had a, a black mama who carried me on her body uh, and I breastfed whenever I wanted. When she went out to work in the fields or in the gardens, I was on her body. I was breastfeeding anytime I wanted. I felt very secure. It was the only place I ever felt secure and happy and I slept in her bed with her and um, she had a little daughter who slept right next to us as well and while the the slave quarters were very violent um, I didn't feel I was protected in that way so I love I had this kinship of love for black people that I've never I didn't understand until I had the memories and um, Okay, so I was twin B, I was taken, I was taken to France, to Paris, to the Rothschilds. I was taken also during my infant years. Um, I was taken by the Jesuit general and the Jesuits onto to remote islands where they um, dug holes and did all kinds of evil rituals where they would bury me in the sand and then bring me out. And um, I was, I was being created. At the same time, there was an amazing majority of the time I was taken by Joseph Mengele. Uh, the real Joseph Mengele, not some Dr. Green or anyone else. It was a real Joseph Mengele. I, I, I was, um, rescued by Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, the real, true, and living God, on um, February 19th of 2019. And um, he helped me to begin to put this all together of what actually happened to me. He was my therapist. He was everything to me. And... So I began, I had actually 80 memories. It took two weeks of memories of what happened with Joseph Mengele. And it was, the torture was so bad that I had trouble even writing it. And I couldn't read it back for, I, I just set it aside for months. It was so painful. And um, so then he would keep calling me back to read them. And when I would say, I don't want to, <laughs> so painful. I can't, he would be with me. And he told me that there was an urgency that it was this urgency had to do with a lot of other people coming free. 
And so I read them. So I have all that documented. And since in, I've been free now, uh, so to speak, <laughs> on the way to being totally free, um, for four and a half years. And uh, I may not be making a very good line timeline of this, but I'm doing the best that I can. And what happened was that when I was when I was t taken there, I was also then taken to the home next to my twin sister, Sue. And I never grew up in a family. I never, the family doesn't know I exist, including my twin sister, Sue, who uh, would get swapped with me. And we were both Sue Ford. And so I would be taken to the house next door to her where the people there also were programmed and they had little boys our age and I stayed in the bedroom of one of the little boys and uh, during the day our grandmother who lived in the house with the family she uh, would torture us and cross program us she was uh, the biggest witch satanist that anyone ever knew. In fact, she, she worked for McDonnell Douglas in Santa Monica, which it, it, when I do the history, it's like that, that opens it's huge. Oh my God. She was all part of everything that all the people are mentioning about that, but I won't go there yet. So um, she told one of my parts, Sue and I had, the same programming system, Joseph Mengele made us of one mind. So we were one mind. I knew everything Sue did, and I was programmed to believe that the life that she lived was my life. But there couldn't have been anything further from the truth. I had nothing really to do with her life unless I was swapped in. And we were trained and programmed how to, they would, Often it was McDonald's bathroom. Um, I would be flown in from France and taken. Um, sometimes Henry Kissinger was the one that was the intermediary if we met in parks or something. But I would be flown in. We would be swapped in the bathroom at McDonald's. We were programmed to one of us go under the stall and with the other one, you know, take your clothes off, swap clothes, swap everything that you had and come out of the bathroom. And we knew the one that was being swapped in was the one that leave the bathroom first. And then the other one was to stay behind until they were, they were instructed. And we had very, very extensive programming on that. And we were swapped our whole lives. And I would be in and out of her, her childhood uh, life and in and out of school, you know, every now and then. Um, when she needed to be reprogrammed or whatever. Um, and then, um, so there was our grandmother who was, she was more than a master programmer. This woman knew witchcraft and was actually teaching. She was teaching and training the people at McDonnell Douglas and other places. She was like high, high up in that evil world. And one day, one of my parts that knew her said, um, Grandma Winnie told us that, she, that we are of the royal red dragon bloodline. And right there, that, that, was, that was the key. I needed to understand how deep and evil this was. Um, and what, what it allowed me having that one little piece of information, I'll just say this right now, is it's these evil bloodlines we were born into and genetically engineered, me, Sue, and one egg, and our we actually have a triplet that was part of Joseph Mingelow's project, but she wasn't in, our, in the womb with us. She was a whole nother part of the experiment, his project. And so... Um, so... Can can we just pause there? Because you've mm -hmm. dropped several bombs. And 
<clears throat> and my job is to uh, help unpack this a little bit. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, so friends, this is the bombshell, right? I, I get an email and I'm like, Hey, yeah, my name is Sue Ford. I'm ready to, to, to chat with you, Dan Duvall. I actually had, had contacted her a couple of years ago, but it wasn't the right time. And uh, so she explained to me, look, uh, I, I am Sue Ford by name, but it was my sister who wrote the book. So, of course, my mind is blown. I'm, I'm thinking, whoa, wow, okay. And so, so now that you're beginning to unpack more of the story, there was a there was a movie that came out a long time ago. I mean, almost 20 years ago now, and it was called The Prestige. Um, I'm not sure if you have any awareness of it, but I'll I'll just Remember, tell you. About- I never saw any movies ever in my life. Wow. I never. Well, uh, there's no need to start now. It's not like it was particularly. <laughs> that well, I understand. Great. But the theme, I mean, uh, the theme of this particular movie was you had these t- twin m- magician brothers, right? So they they go around and they do this trick where you drop through the floor or whatever, then you peer on the other side. And it's like, how did, well, there was twins the whole time, but it was yeah. a hidden twin. The whole movie is about this hidden twin from birth. Nobody really knew that they were twins or that there was a twin at all. They just kept switching in and out, in and out. And then the movie is this, that literally that theme. And so as you're talking, I'm almost like, okay, well, they put it in that film, but is this a real thing? And if it is, how common was this with the, children going through the monarch project and being prepared as presidential slaves everything your sister wrote about was this only you or were there many others joseph, I mean, just joseph mingala one one of the memories um was of he had this big room and there were uh, was a huge cage big giant cage with a lot of children in it and i was held in another cage next to them i was different and I, I still haven't figured out exactly why, but I know that it's the level of evil bloodlines because it wasn't just the Royal Red Dragon bloodline. I had others too, but he had all these kids were being tortured. We were all fed like pigs. Slaw. I mean, it, it was like, wasn't like we had no clothes, no clothes, nothing, no bed, no bed, no blanket when you go to sleep. No, nothing. You just, you know, you're just starving to death. And most of the time they kept me starving. Um, But I believe that a lot of, a lot of people who were in the Monarch program also have hidden twins. And what, what I want to explain is just as an overview is that my sister prayed like Derek Prince taught her online. And she prayed, um, dear Jesus, please put me in the right place at the right time, according to your will. And so that allowed Jesus to rescue me when I was swapped into her life at the perfect time. Because the truth is that my sister Sue, twin A, who wrote Thanks for the Memories, would never have had a chance to get totally free until I was because, and she didn't even know I was real. So she couldn't undo the programming. And then people who were supposed experts in the field of all of this were not only lying to her, but were getting her reprogrammed so that she would never find her twin sister. She had an internal twin sister that she was programmed with, but she actually, has and still has a twin sister that is me and that we were we were cross programmed uh, like massively by our grandmother who stitched us together our skin with needles i mean it, she had a lot of these memories but she didn't understand she thought because the, the therapist all told her this is programming it's your twin sister programming but it's not it was not, and it was, I mean, it was both. Um, so, uh, 
being as high level in this evil as I have now remembered, you have to realize that on February 19th of um, 2019, I had no idea about any of this. I just thought I was Sue Ford wrote, thanks for the memories, had a public life, had been married, had children. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know that I was not her. And I didn't know that um, that I, I had no idea what any of my memories were. So some of this I refer to is from hours and hours and hours and days. Actually, I've been in ministry with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, the true Holy Spirit of God. Every single day since February 19th, 2019. And when I would ask for a day off, the Holy Spirit said, there's there's no time. It, it's urgent. And so every single day, I have not done anything else. There were occasional times when, you know, I did go and do stuff. But mostly this, I he wakes me up at 4, 4, 4.30 in the morning, every morning. And we get up and do the work with him. And I love Jesus. I, just, I, I can't tell you how much I love Jesus and how real he is. And what I want every person that is a victim or a survivor to know is that he's standing there waiting for you. Because he is the ultimate therapist. He knows everything that's ever happened to you. He knew, he knew exactly what happened. He knew every single detail. He was with me. And so as you as you are putting all of these pieces together, like you you <laughs> okay. you have got to be like hitting this like um like crisis moment because at a certain point you you actually you, you moved, you moved, you went into this deep like place with God alone. Hello. Um, describe to me what that initial like lightning bolt of awakening or awareness was. Like, what was it that just broke this open for you? Well, he said the minute he rescued me, he said um, there will be no. I mean, he gave me the list of the do's and don'ts. Mm. You know, no TV, mm -hmm. no. Um, there was nothing. I really had no contact with anyone except the people that whose house I stayed in for nine months. Um, and one of their people. Uh, but um, what happened that during every morning, I, I had no one else to turn to. So I would turn to him every morning. With, help! You know, I mean, I, all I said was help Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. I mean, I must have said a billion times. I'm still doing it open my refrigerator in the morning and it's like, I don't, I'm, I got my mind on something else. And I say, help me, Jesus. And he reminds me how it's this. Okay. So um, the, the major moment came um, when I realized how real this was, was when it was just a couple months into my rescue when he said, I want you to get two baby dolls. So I ordered two identical baby dolls off of Amazon and when they came, he ministered to me and said, you are a twin and your name is legally Sue Ford, but I'm going to call you Esther because you have been called for a time such as this. And then he said, I'm going to help you remember your life. And it took a couple of years really for me to wrap to undo, you know, to remind myself, as he reminded me, that happened to Sue. That happened to Sue. That happened to Sue, not you. And while he was doing that, he was mostly remind, bringing back the memories to me day after day after day, the memories of what I was involved with, what I was truly involved with. So they would swap you and twin a sue out in different locations bathrooms uh parks, parks. receded park in california i mean 
Sue wrote about it all in Thanks for the Memory. She just didn't know that she didn't remember the part about me being there. <laughs> and 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 she didn't remember, but that was probably because she was programmed not to just oh, like exactly. Me. Well, and cross programming, triple corded, triple wow. cord programming with our triplet who isn't mm -hmm. even usually around and Sue and I. So the cording was huge. So so at birth, you were taken overseas. You were taken to Europe. You were put on a, a, a Rothschild farm, which, wow. Okay. And then your sister was left here to be raised by the parents that she wrote about in her book, Thanks for the right. Memories. Our, fa our family that and I didn't grow up with. That, I didn't right. have a father or mother. But you... <laughs> you were then eventually taken and put in the house next door with the grandma. This and was during that, this was in all of this early stuff I've talked about was during my infancy. Hmm. All of it. I was being flown place to place. It wasn't like I, they waited till I was two to put me in next door. It was like, I was there for a month in California being reprogrammed next door as our grandmother did the work. And, um, Sue wrote, I, this just comes to mind. I hope it's okay to put it in here. But Sue wrote, thanks for the memories about our grandmother, Winnie, taking her as a baby to the British royal family, Queen Elizabeth, one and two. And it, and it's true. <laughs> and they end up being of the royal red dragon bloodline. The Windsor family. And if you saw Queen Elizabeth's coffin, I could not watch that. She is a family member and we were heavily involved. I was with her and all of this evil. I was like the evil strong person over her too. And she had a bunch of people doing the evil stronghold stuff over her. But she had a royal red dragon over draped over her coffin. That was the part, the only part the Holy Spirit had me see. I, I couldn't believe she had the dragon on her coffin. Wow. So this is just, uh, you know, this is another aside, but your prayers for the leaders, your prayers for the leaders are vital right now for real true Christians who can intercede to pray over all of these evil bloodlines. Because um, I was reading this morning, actually, in Wendy Hoffman's book, I, it's, quite new actually um she wrote with allison with alice miller and it was talking about how alice miller wrote about how people need to pray because no one of us was ever had a choice to be born into this evil and when you're born into it and you're tortured even before you get in the womb in the egg in the ovum you're tortured. You're put, they're putting demons and doing satanic rituals on you and burying you with dead kings of Egypt and pharaohs and doing everything to, to load evil on you. There's no way, there's no way to get free. And the only way that there is to get free is if you pray. And these people need our prayers. These people need our prayers. And I have been, because of Dan's prayer in the book, I've been praying over all the evil bloodlines, over all the leaders, even our owner, over our current owner. And um, the truth is, I believe that some of these people choose as they get older to go with evil and many people don't. And if you don't choose to go with evil, you never wake up. You got to dig out. So that's what Sue did. Sue dug out. She, mm -hmm. she lost everything she ever had. She lost everything digging out, but she wrote a book. And now with that information and my information, lots of people are going to get dug out. So, so they were switching you guys in and out, but at a certain point, I mean, they had you in underground locations like they didn't just keep you out in the public do you have an idea of when they started with 
keeping you in underground look and what that means? Um, I actually am. It, it's been very recent for me. Um, I was in the word, it, I, I don't know, six months ago, seven months ago. And the Holy Spirit said, get up right now and draw, get up and draw right now. What's in your, what you, what you see. And I had no idea what I was going to draw. So I just stood there and I started drawing little black discs, and little silver discs. And, and um, it's what people call UFOs. And um, I, I began to understand even before then that I had been living in and in, in under Antarctica and Area 51. I had places, um, I had programming that was more, how do I say this? My status and level of security was higher than most all the people on the bases. So my programmers programmed me to have parts come forward to walk us into the highest levels of security, which is usually way, way in the back. And we were, I mean, th this is introducing a whole big giant new opening, but we were, we were handcuffed and put in leg irons as we got deeper because they were afraid of the demonic, I believe, the only thing I can come up with is they were afraid of the, the power of the demonic beings that lived within me, that they put in me and, and possessed me with. And um, help me, God. Uh, so you, while your sister is going through different stages of MK Ultra programming, being groomed as a, uh, to to be trafficked at the highest levels of U.S. government. I mean, you took part in, I assume, some of that for the switch-ins and switch-outs, but at the same time, I mean, you actually lived in Antarctica. For yeah, Antarctica. and that a lot of that didn't start until I was um, full-time until I was older. But I okay. Sue was having my memories mm. of... Sue was having my memories of being in um, underground places where there were huge giants and evil, evil beings. See the Rothschilds. Did I already mention their name? Hmm? <laughs> Other Rothschilds, Baron, under Baron Guy, they had um, huge underground and off planet. Um, wait a minute. They had huge underground and off planet. Um, places where they created hybrid beings. They created gen genetically en engineered human, animal, um, uh, everything that's that you that's supposed to be going to come on the earth has already been created. And they are giants. And there are giants. And they... <laughs> um, so a lot of my job as a little girl, and and I worked, I've had a lot of memories of Miriam Rothschild, and I worked with her um, sometimes, but a lot, she was involved, probably program two now, I understand, but um, in these, uh, taking care of all these glass, this is all the stuff Sue so started having leak memories, glass, tubes with air coming into it with all these beings in it and some of them are babies and um some of them are humans and they're still being they they actually uh, i don't know this is very gross but they actually breed human babies to feed to these evil giant entities that they plan on releasing at the end times to kill everyone. And they're full of demons. They, they are created hybrids that look like giants or dinosaurs or, you know, a man and a dinosaur, you know, every kind of freaky thing you could imagine. And you fill it with demons and, and set it loose. And 
One thing I, I wanted to say is that they told my sister she would never stop trying to defect. She would never, she would never, once she got a little glimpse of the memory that this was going on, she wouldn't stop. I mean, she left everything. She left her family. She left everything to get free. Um, and they kept telling her, if you would just stop trying to defect, we will take you on the ISS, the International Space Station, when we create the, the cataclysm that takes everyone out. And Sue looked at them and she said, I had rather die here with all these people than go with you. And they, what they've created on that side is hugely demonic. And I believe that they are going to loose this as part of Satan's plan. Um, Satan has everybody so fooled. He is, I mean, this guy is, he's smart. He's very savvy and people don't know what's coming. And the church has no clue. And the church is dumbed down in, res, in regards to deliverance ministry. And that's what's needed most of all right now. Oh my God, we need deliverance ministries all over the place because there's so many people that don't know they're programmed and they uh they um okay so well let I, me I, let, let me take you back to some of the points you were making so so first of all you know i did a, a long series of of podcasts with um, a gentleman that I worked with for years, Robert Van Dreist Mitchell. And uh, he was also programmed by the Rothschilds. Uh, and he the also- The same family of Rothschilds or other family? Same family. Okay, well, I wanna, I wanna just say, drop another little bombshell right here real quick, is that um, Jacob, Lord Jacob Rothschild is our backup. Uh, and he was the worst. I mean, he, he's this man is so evil. He, oh, and we had Sir Evelyn Rothschild. We were tied to a number of the Rothschild families and had their children, all of them. Anyway, I, I think I just screwed up where you were going. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. Um, but he, he mentioned some of the, you know, same players, uh, definitely Evelyn. Rothschild and uh, you know some of some of the elements of his story w included being on the Mars bases and uh cities and and the beings that they had created uh th that that were giant um yeah. also mm -hmm. looking at some of the giant reptilians that the the, the different um classes even uh some of them like 20 feet tall he said I, it was you know, not yeah. just there. He he spent time in Hollow Earth, also connected with their network and other places off planet. And I mean, it, it's it's quite robust. The amount of brokenness that he survived is off the charts. And and um, I, I really consider him a hero. I bless but him. Yeah. There's so many um, things that, like you just mentioned. It's but it's you know very very similar wow, wow. and <laughs> and um you know he said those things on this podcast so just to oh you know, wow that's you. cool that's confirmation so what i want to tell you about this current is yes um, this is sort of has a little bit of humor in it um i didn't really understand when i drew all those supposedly ufos um that are not unidentified to us at all we understand those are very identified uh, and they're real they're very real and the Rothschilds also have been creating those and we what happened uh I'll tie a little bit of the current into way back in my past because uh, I told my one neighbor about this UFO stuff and I mean he's been listening to me and just like he thank god he's an awesome Christian he just listens you know, otherwise he could have turned around and said, God, you're nuts. I mean, but he didn't. And 
So I was telling him all about the UFO thing. I'm having UFO memories. And, um, and so then I went back and I was praying the next morning. I said, Holy Spirit, please show him that this, if this is real or not. There's a way you can confirm this. And that night, this guy told me the next day, he said, you won't believe this. And I said, what? And he goes, my wife and I were standing out in the driveway. And we saw a UFO right there. And and I said, wow. And then he said, well, okay, that's not the, that's not the, the thing of it is there was more. And he said, we went um, to my daughter's house for dinner. And at night we saw another UFO. And um, his wife said, oh, wow, I guess they really want you to know, to see that they're real. And um, so this is about the same time, a couple months before our government starts saying they're finding true alien bodies. Well, they are, but they're not, I don't, you know, I don't know, is it Robert, the other survivor? He may know, this is all very new. This, this UFO section is all very new to me, but what I, it triggered memories that I already knew as a child, how to drive those, that you drive them with your mind. And um, it's like I was part of the time I was escorting people or I was a lot of the time I was being the channel from the deepest level of evil to these scientists like at Douglas Aircraft who were building all of these things. It, it's like it's all starting to come together. But in my mind, still my mind's still very shattered and broken and things come in and I document it and I do the best that I can. But this is what the Holy Spirit wants me to know is this is very real. They, they are real and people may not fool around with going out to look at UFOs. And it's dangerous. It's, it's very dangerous. So now you were cross programmed with your sister and, uh, your sister in her book wrote about being trafficked to many U.S. presidents, uh, having to have sex with them, having to have sex with major people in sports and different religion, religion. Now, now, while she was doing that, what what role, if any, did you have as the one who she was twinned with, was there a significance? Yes. Yes. Um, I realized this is quite recent too. I was horrified. And, and at the same time, I realized that this is all this evil has advanced to the level that everybody, we don't have time to be fooling around with being shamed. And under, I, I, I hate that I was this, but it was not in my choice, but I was, Actually, they the way they had us programmed are the demon. I was being exposed to the highest level of demonic forces possible. I have been in deliverance, coughing and yawning of demons for four and a half years, and I'm still not done. I was, while my sister was having sex and hands on with the president, with religious leaders with um, people in all, all forms of the whole world, the world leaders, uh, and being taken to satanic rituals with them, I was sending through me, through my demonic parts, or however they had our programming, sending those demons into her that were going into them. And she couldn't ever understand. I remember, I think she wrote this in Thanks for the Memories, that she didn't understand why they would use her as the rape victim at every satanic ritual. Every all everyone would line up to have sex with her, and she didn't understand. And they were getting their demonic hit. They were get every rape every time she was raped on the altar. The people coming forward were getting demonic power from her, and it was being funneled largely through me. And I don't know how our triplet yeah you know, factors into this, but. I was the, uh, I don't even know what you call it. I was the food, the demonic food, sending all these demons into her. I was sending the demons into her 
you know, I wasn't, but my programming and the way it was set up was linking all those demons to her. And then she was delivering them to all the leaders. And the truth is she, she got them all. And, and (laughs) I shouldn't go there yet. Um, It's all the leaders. It's all the leaders. And it's some that people think are awesome. And the reason I believe that people are all are all different in how they've been um, programmed and they're all different in the way they've been used and they're all different in what they what they know of God and they're all different in the level of whether they are good hearted I mean, that's what Jesus looked at our heart, what's in there. And so some leaders have done some pretty incredible things, but they were still bloodline families because you're not allowed to be president unless you are a bloodline family. That's it. You got to be part of it. You're chosen. You are a chosen, a chosen person. And our country hasn't been free of this Nazi thing ever because like Sue wrote, and thanks for the memories, the Project Paperclip, the doctors. Joseph Mengele was my programmer and my torture and my creator, and Werner von Braun was hers at NASA. So we have NASA. It's all about this. NASA is a big lie. All that's everything there. All it's like this little story out here while they're creating UFOs. Um, they're, they, they're creating all of this stuff and the masterminds from Nazi Germany took over the United States a long time ago with the CIA and George Bush. So, um, you know, George Bush, even senior put all that into place, everything locked up. We're still under all of that. It's all a foundation. And so, you know, it's time it is like to save what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, what Jesus wants us to do, all of us need to just totally turn to him. And he has got to be everything right now, everything to us. We cannot afford to not be in the Bible. We can't afford to not be praying or waking up, whether you're a victim or not. We, we all have to work together. And Daniel said in one, one of his talks um, about that, as we save the victims, it depopulates Satan's army. And that may be my, some of my words, but that's how I felt. It was like, gosh, every Christian would just jump on a bandwagon here and help all these victims get free. It would undo Satan's whole plan. I mean, he can't, Satan can't do a thing without all of us slaves. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, well, I, I definitely agree. I, I think... I have several perspectives on, on the kingdom of darkness that, you know, I, number one, I, I happen to believe that the um, a lot of the authority that Satan works with in the earth, he traded into. In other words, he got it from human bloodlines that sold out. Yeah. And so if we sold out, we have the power in Jesus Christ to take it back. And when we take it back, that means his abilities go okay. down. It's just to me very clear in the word uh, who's in charge. God owns the earth that never changed. And he put it in the jurisdiction of mankind. And so there's there's a huge, huge capacity for uh, the body of Christ working with the power of Jesus to change things in real time, even into the end days. I, I am on the other side of certain things where I see the massive, un believable amount of opposition that the devil has worked up and and mm-hmm. and yet i'm sitting in psalm 2 the lord sits in the heavens and laughs as he holds his enemies in derision mm-hmm. like i marry everything and 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 i'd marry it to the cross which is to me the both the uh, sacrifice but the victory of jesus it's everything and and there's no escaping that you know i i say satan's in a closed loop it's a closed system he loses on every side every time no matter what there's no other way out and and Jesus says, look, uh, I will shortly crush Satan underneath your feet. And I personalized that. I, I'm like, well, that, that, that that's me. <laughs> He's Romans 16 is talking to me in Jesus name. So, I, you know, we, we, we stay encouraged, but 
we expose the devil. Like I, I you know, I, I, I love working with individuals that have been programmed at the highest levels because I, I, I feel as a uh, son of God that that the information that comes forth is number one, the explanation of what the targets are. And, and, and number two, it's Satan's worst nightmare because he is the father of lies and his power is in lies. As long as people will not believe the things that are true, he has power. Once yeah. it's exposed and it can be targeted, targeted with prayer, targeted with deliverance, targeted with freedom, the finished work of Jesus, it changes things. It does. It does. It's hugely changes things. And that's awesome. I mean, and see, Sue, growing up in California and having done her recovery in California, a lot of people were, she knew Jesus always, but a lot of the focus was on therapy, you know, going to a therapist who knew. And it, Jesus made it very clear in the very beginning when he rescued me, there's no way, there's no way that anyone could get out of this. It's a spiritual it's a spiritual issue and there is no other way other than Jesus. He is a solution, which is so awesome because it makes it easier. Mm. I mean, you don't have to be running around trying to find an answer. You just go to Jesus and he has, he has an answer individually for every single survivor mm. and their helpers. I mean, he's individual. It's like you get the major mega brain. Uh, of Jesus Christ and Nazareth of, through the Holy Spirit, helping people to get free and guiding his people in how to help. I, it's just, it's Jesus. So, is cool. now, now I have a question and um, you, you can respond to this, obviously, however you see fit, but you know, with the way that they set things up, so they used you kind of like as a, almost like a strong man anchor point. And so you were able to, send this massive demonic hit but it was almost like psychically i guess if we can use that it term. was automatic it was just an automatic transfer it it went i i had no i i don't even think i had parts who were involved in that i it mean automatic right through you to yeah, her to her and it would it, and and so all of these people that were using her and raping her at these rituals they would all get that hit and yeah. they kept coming back for it and and would you suggest that from the kingdom of darkness perspective and maybe like on an astral plane level uh this was building a grid of people yeah absolutely it oh, was yeah. putting people on a grid of control and demonic manipulation yes and it was um looping them in so they couldn't couldn't get out i I, yeah i think i think there it was like sue wrote a lot about um john kennedy and she loved him and she had sex with him a lot and he was an amazing person but he was a bloodline guy and i i think where the holy spirit has helped me it's like to understand one day I'm reading the Bible. I read the 10 commandments and I look at the Holy spirit and I go, okay, how on earth am I supposed to honor my, my mother and father help me. And he said, you can honor them by writing why they did what they did. And as I have gone through my own recovery, not just remembering, you know, I didn't, I wasn't like Sue where I got to have, public memories and then which is a, a good good life and and the bad stuff mine was all bad but i realized i did all that evil my whole 68 years 68 years of being used at, in that evil capacity that I had no control over i had no choice i didn't even have an any i mean there was no chance that i could ever ever have gotten in control of myself and it was only because our mother who was raised by that witch Winnie got down on her knees as a victim of this had no clue had Sue brought her home got down on her knees and her words were God 
please help her. That's all she said. God said, that's all I needed to hear. It set my whole course of our life to undo Sue, to undo, set me free, to set uh, our mother actually was saved before she died. It, it, it's, um, the people don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. I mean, they, and most people don't even know if, if my mom, our mom hadn't said that prayer, Jesus wouldn't have had the legal permission to rescue me. I mean, the three words. So, words. so okay. Considering the, the 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 twinning aspect, talk about the effect that that has on on the mind. Like, what level of ability exists for memories to bleed from you to mm -hmm. your twin, from your twin back to you? Information that one learns, like. What is the nature of that mind connection? Um, the One Mind Joseph Mengele programming was powerful. But then they used a programming to sophisticate and make it more detailed by like having Sue be the public person and me being the private person, but me having programming that links me so closely to Sue that I am with her in everything she does and have memory of everything she ever did, including having sex with her husband. I mean, I, I was, it, it, okay, so that that part of it has helped me in my recovery. Um, it's like I have my sister kind of to be able to uh, confirm some stuff. Um, the programming was so high tech way back when, when we were little kids. And then when Sue started breaking down and having memories in 19, what, 84, 85, um, that's when Henry Kissinger said, uh, you know, just we got to watch how she does this because others are going to be breaking down too that have the same system. And so we need to know how to fix this. Well, over the years, they did upgrades and upgrades and upgrades and upgrades. And so um, our, our programming got more sophisticated and they actually did the AI and all the, the programs um, that Sue had discovered. She worked very hard to discover all the programs Werner von Braun did, all the codes the keys, the triggers, you know, what everything was, they overrode that and just did everything with frequency. So you can't identify it. So survivors couldn't identify the, pre the their frequency programming because they couldn't see it. And, and that's when, that's when the Holy Spirit uh, began to show me how right now it's, it's such high tech that it, it's virtually nearly impossible without supernatural intervention from Jesus Christ to undo it for people. And here is your book <laughs> that I just started praying six or seven months ago. That is the high tech, the high tech prayers that Jesus takes care of um, and begins to bring it all uh the words, I have trouble with words because uh, the words in the book are what the, the um, programmers use and the techniques they use, but they are interwoven with Jesus and his spirit. But it's like um, they've gotten so high tech advanced that the younger people are going to have without Jesus, it's impossible to get out because they can't read it, find it, discover it like Sue did. Without thanks for the memories. I mean, Sue just dedicated her life to it. That was it. Um, and the threats that she got from it and the punishment that she received were something she could have never ever imagine they would do to her and her daughter. But that's what happened. Kelly took a lot of uh, punishment for thanks for the memories. It was bad.
they do very evil things to control people like Sue and me. So we need a lot of prayer. We need all of us real Christians, real true Christians that know Jesus, have a personal relationship with him. Please pray and intercede for all these people because in doing so, what the Holy Spirit showed me is that the church is undoing what's getting ready to be done to them. It's, it's been done to the victims, all of us. Now it's going to happen to everybody. What happened to us is the, the whole, entire world is getting ready to be completely enslaved and taken over with mind, mind control. That is frequency that they can't figure out. Well, and that's part of the, 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 the painful part of the journey that I had to take in trying to help people is, you know, it wasn't until I really got to the extreme prayers that shake heaven and earth, that that level of understanding and ability to articulate concepts that were being utilized to hold people in bondage, that I started seeing massive breakthroughs in people that would consider themselves targeted individuals. And, you know, the people that do consider themselves targeted individuals, they they go through things that can be very difficult to just explain. Is that well, yeah, I, I wake up with scoop marks, but I don't know why people follow me uh, and, and traffic patterns move strangely around mm -hmm. me. Um, I will just have, you know, ringing in my ears and then suddenly it's like I'm a different person, but like, you know, they, there's a lot of stuff and it feels very violating and confusing and, and, and unstoppable, impossible to solve. And, and I started to really get some traction when we, we got the extreme prayers together because I was, for instance, able to begin ha hacking away at the artificial intelligence and the artificial intelligence is is a quantum problem. It's not like you know power lines running into people. It's like like the, the the artificial intelligence is working off of these cosmic computers. They don't even exist on the planet. They're off planet. Some of them. Some of them exist on craft that go interdimensionally. But they're you know they're going in and out of people. Uh, the computers and the artificial intelligence, the programs, it's, it's, it's this massively complex problem set. Um, and, and of course, it's not even human intelligence that built half of this stuff. Most of the stuff was, was, was not built. The angels use the artificial intelligence to build the technology that they're using on people now. Like not even all of the fallen angels are smart enough to figure this stuff out, <laughs> which is probably going to be shameful for them to hear me say that, but they know it's true. Like, it, 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 <laughs> That's good. I, I just it's it's a tough problem, right? And and um, but we were able to start getting some language around this stuff and start hacking away at it. And and it, it is it is a massive thing. It's not bigger than Jesus, though. And um, I, I was very encouraged when when I found out that you did say some of the prayers in that book and they were helpful. That that was very encouraging to me. I am so grateful. They are. And some of them uh, took me into such deep deliverance that I actually had to go lay down. Um, and some of the deliverances were huge. But um, yes, I have completed almost all of them. And, and I am still on a course with the Holy Spirit where he leads me like the singularity prayer to go back in and do different you know, he said, say these about two body parts, you know, every day. And, you know, I've got the Holy Spirit's directing my path through your books. And it's not just the, it's all three of them, the, the, all of them, all three of them. I have to do a lot of the fallen angel ones. And some of them aren't in one book and they are in another. So I've got all three books and I just listen to. I'm really not that smart. I'm, I'm not very smart at all. So the Holy Spirit tells me, go here, go. He even goes like, uh, okay, do the fourth, open this book and do the fourth one down. One, he doesn't even name the name. And so I go down, okay, one, two, three, four, and I do that. I mean, it's like, he treats me like a little child because I ask him to help me. And he does. He helps me to not get messed up and... um. God is so much more than people realize. You need to ask and talk to him. Everybody. 
so coming back on so coming back on some of these these themes right so so we're learning we're learning that you were you you had one mind programming that was then reinforced and then over the years the programming was upgraded upgraded and upgraded um now you are sitting in some ways in sue ford's life yeah i am and so I want to ask this question that I know a lot of people are thinking, if if you have Sue Ford's life and have had it since 2018, then where's the Sue Ford that wrote the book? I, I, I don't know this 100%. What I do know 100% is that they kept reprogramming her towards the end there when she was remembering all that stuff I talked to you about. Um, they were like, this is it. We've had it with you. I mean, they they were over the edge that she just would not stop. So I believe what the Holy Spirit has told me is that they, they wiped her mind and they are using her as the mind file that I once was for Alexander Roth. And... Um, I can't, I can't tell you how much pain this causes me. And, um, and all I know is that the Holy Spirit just keeps saying, trust me, trust me, I have a plan. And so I would ask everyone, please pray for Sue Ford and her family and her daughter and her children and the whole family there. But really for Sue, um, I mean, I know that when we die, we, if we're saved, and I know she is, I know she knew Jesus very well, that we, we don't ever really die. We, we just get to be with him. So I'm for myself and for her, I'm okay with all that. But right now I just, I want her to understand that all the work that she did years of work, I want her to be able to, to be with me and to you know, that's, that's not what the Holy Spirit's saying, but I don't, she's not here and she's not shown back up. And um, I, I knew, I didn't understand why the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me talk to you or anyone else until what last week. Um, and that was because he wanted me to be so sure that I am not part of her programming, that I am real, that my life had, had underground all over the place, all over the world um, is, uh, is real. And I know now I know, I know my life is real. And I know that um, Sue is my identical twin. And I know what was really weird was some programmer asked her uh, when she was being turned in, uh, for reporting that she knew she had actually had memories of a real twin sister. This was a long, long time ago in the nineties, eighties. Um, and she was, um, Oh God, please help me. The, the question the programmer asked her was, do you, he was using that is a called idiomotor finger thing where you ask a question and you raise one finger for yes and one for no. Do you have a twin sister that's two inches shorter than you? And I don't know what she answered. I'm sure it was yes, because it got a reprogrammed for three months at Redstone Arsenal back a long time. But um, it was, this is, I, I, I couldn't make this stuff up, but I went to her doctor in her life here and, um, they weighed me and took my my height and the nurse looked at me and she said, you've lost, you've shrunk two inches. And there was that question that the programmer had asked. I am two inches shorter than my twin. Her clothes, I, I, I never bought anything. I'm just using all her stuff. Her clothes is big on me. Um, I mean, yeah. So, uh. I believe that 
God in his infinite wisdom has this perfect timing if we will all just get on board with him and stay on board with him that he has a plan for his remnant. And, and I realize now that you're a big part of that in ways that I could have never, I could have never imagined that book with all the high tech in it that I can't even understand. I have no clue. Um, and, and one final thing, I, I don't know if I should say this or not, but it's hard not to, um, is that on Rosh Hashanah of this year, Day of Atonement, I fasted and I repented for not just my sin, but for my entire bloodlines uh, because I was genetically engineer. I have a bunch of evil bloodlines of which I'm digging out of with the help of the Holy Spirit. But the um, I was in my Bible chair and I'm praying and the Holy Spirit, um, you know, talks to me like always. But I look behind me and there was this big, huge, bright light behind me. And I thought it was some demon trick, you know, trying to get me off of my day of atonement. And so I started warfaring against this light that I saw and the Holy Spirit told me it was Archangel Raphael that he had sent in order to help me and when I calmed down and I realized I was hearing from Raphael he was speaking to me like angels in the Bible spoke to people who didn't believe um, that uh, where I'm going with this is that our Heavenly Father, and I call him Abba Yah, because I had too many father, evil Roman, Catholic, and um, he told me that he sent Archangel Raphael to help me. And for eight days straight, Archangel Raphael helped me through the books, through the through Daniel's books, um, the Extreme Prayers book, especially through all the ones that says, do not do this without a coach or you could go unconscious. And and I had an incredible angel help me. And I went into the deepest deliverance for the last 10 days during that uh, the Rosh Hashanah and the, the feast days it was absolutely amazing. And then I get to get notified that I am released after all this time to talk to Daniel DeFall. And he's just had a baby and he's got no schedule and he is untouchable, but God made a way by having me be, having befriended one of the people on his worship team. So God is amazing. He can do everything we need. We just have to listen and obey, listen to him, Follow his direction and his guidance is absolutely perfect. He puts Satan to shame. I mean, Satan doesn't have a clue, but um, took me a while to understand that about God because I had always believed that Satan was more powerful because he always won. I mean, in all, all these years of my life, Satan was in control of mine and everyone else around me's life. And now everything has changed. It has all changed. And I have hope. I have hope. And um, it, it's just, it's, it's God is all about truth. And he is telling the truth and he's telling us the truth. And he doesn't want his people to be blinded. And it's like this church that I tried to go to, they just wanted me to shut up. And I couldn't. I couldn't shut up. And um, the Holy Spirit showed me this picture. I have it in the other room. It's of this lady with her hand up like this. And he said, how on earth are you going to help yourself and others doing this? Wow. I mean, so it's like the church has got to wake up. If there really is a real church, the real church needs to wake up because this is Satan's plan. And Satan is their enemy, but most of them don't know he's even real. 
<laughs> well, that will change. You know, Esther, I have a, a lot more uh, to talk to you about. And so this will, we'll just call this the first of other interviews that will be uh, coming here after. But I think for now, we can probably park this conversation here and just, I, I, I just want you to know, um, I'm very grateful for you. I am very grateful for you. I am very grateful for Jesus calling you and that you're young and you have, you know, all of this, you, most people can't even hear one survivor and you've had years and massive of hearing this and what a gift, what a gift, oh my gosh, that you understand. I mean, I don't have anyone to talk to that understands any of this. And if, you know, they just all think I'm crazy, but you are, God has set you in a place where there's hope for this to be turned around for the people that are involved to be set free. And, and the Christians need to understand the true believers need to understand that they're next. They, I mean, I don't think most people have, thought about that but the holy spirit showed me that very clearly they're not they're next to be enslaved uh, it won't you know this is nazi germany and we are in stages and you know it's it's so much so nazi um anyway thank you so much and the ministry is of jesus it's a real thing it's a real god it's, oh my gosh <laughs> supernatural and all You're of it. two so, kinds no no it's just <laughs> this is real this is i mean this is a real thing it's the only way out of this is supernaturally connected every way to jesus the other thing i wanted to tell people that are survivors mm. before we close this off is that yes. i don't know it's been a couple of years the holy spirit told me get a <laughs> bottle of olive oil so and put your hands around it and ask me to come into that oil, full, incredible, the true Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Holy Spirit, come in this. And he's had me every single morning to take that oil and anoint myself in covenant with him. And what I didn't realize why I was doing that. It's like, but I understand now coming in covenant with him was lining me all up. And my parts, lining us all up under the Lordship of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and covenant with him. So, you know, I don't know if everybody wants to pray about that. You know, I pray about everything. I don't do anything Jesus doesn't tell me to do. But um, we we need uh, the easiest fast track to get out of this. My sister spent from. 30 years old to 68 and she did a lot of work compared to what everyone else was doing but now we're at the point where people to get free what the holy spirit showing me is the door is closed getting ready to close where people won't have that opportunity so we all need to urgently jump on the bandwagon with jesus to make this happen wow it doesn't happen with just one person, you just happen to be the the gateway person. You're the the leader. The you you you've already been trained in the school of God uh, with with all this experience with survivors. You you know this problem inside and out. Like I mean, I don't even know it. Like you know it. I, I, there's a lot I don't know yet. I've only been out four years, four and a half. So. Anyway, thank you. And, you know, uh, um, everybody pray for Dan Duvall. Please. Family. <laughs> pray, pray, uh, intercede for him every day. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, I received that. I, I, you're very kind. Thank you. And, 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 and <laughs> I look forward to having you back, not just for the compliments, but like, <laughs> I do appreciate those too. But no, mm -hmm. I, I am I'm very mm -hmm. excited to get more of your story. And so folks, uh, this has been Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. You will be hearing from uh, 
Sue Ford, a.k.a. Esther, again. And so with that said, we'll see you next time. God bless and Godspeed. You've been listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Visit me at dandevall.com where you'll discover merch, books, and the opportunity to engage in our private social network. Join the tribe by subscribing to our email list and supporting this podcast.